This is the Sitam Worship Service. Welcome to the Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS. Good morning and welcome to the CBS Family Service. It's a delight to have you join us. Uh, over the next two Sundays, we're going to be hearing from our good friend, Bishop David Oginde. This will be more or less a parting shot. Uh, some thoughts that the Lord has given to him to share with us as uh, as he finds his uh, time to exit uh, Christ is the Answer Ministries as Bishop. Bishop, um, it's, it's interesting. When you get to this point in your career, you get to this point in ministry, uh, what sort of thoughts are going through your mind as you're thinking, I must hand over to the next leadership? Wow. Uh, the truth is, I have not th th thought too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All I have been uh, really very concerned about is that uh, the, the, the handover process, the yes. transition process yes. is as uh, smooth as possible. Amen. And that uh, the incoming bishops finds uh, a safe landing mm -hmm. and uh, is able to to move on and take yes. the ministry forward. Amen. Amen. So that has been uppermost Most in my mind. Amen. I, Amen. I suspect that after it is all done, yes. then now I'm faced with the yes. reality of uh, nothing else yes. to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there'll be lots more to do. But you've given the title for this uh, message, and we'll use it again next Sunday, when your world is reset. Yes. And and I'm sure the, the thought of resetting for yourself is going through your mind. Uh, how has the Bible sort of prepared you to, uh, to, 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 to take into account this time in your life? Uh, the, the reset is about change. Yes. Uh, because things change. Amen. Now, the, the, prob the, the difference of a reset is that it is something that can either come because you've done it yourself by choice or sometimes not by choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, a, it's a change that comes upon you. In the case of our transition, it's something that I knew. Yes. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I've had 10 yes, years. Yes, yes, yeah, to, to prepare for <laughs> to the prepare change. For the change. Yes. Uh, that I knew that uh, I'll serve five years mm -hmm. if uh, uh, God gives me strength uh -huh. and the leadership is willing. Amen. Uh, they give me another five years. Amen. I serve another five years. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, it is over. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. you move on to something else. Yes. So that has helped me to, to prepare. And I've, I've looked at various people in scriptures and how they prepared themselves mm -hmm. uh, for these kinds of transition. And that has been of great encouragement. Yes. In fact, one of the things I'll be sharing in both in this session mm -hmm. and in next, next Sunday session mm -hmm. It's just that uh, learning from Remember, others, amen. how to handle change, how mm -hmm. to handle challenges mm -hmm. and, and situations that mm -hmm. come in our lives. Mm -hmm. And there are so many examples. Yes, yes. Uh, Jesus himself is a great example of yeah. just how he managed mm -hmm. uh, the transition process. Mm -hmm. In fact, I am I'm preparing a, mm -hmm. uh, a, a teaching oh, on uh, the Jesus model of transition. Of transition. Wonderful. Yes, it's Wonderful. amazing. It's amen. just amazing. Amen. So there's a lot to learn, and that has been of great encouragement amen. for me. Wonderful. Yeah. We have people watching us from all over the world, and particularly from the United States. Um, as we get ready to go into the service, uh, perhaps there's an encouragement about transition. There's an encouragement about the move of God that you could have for our friends watching in America in particular. Wow. United States of America, one of the most powerful nations. We have been praying. I can say as a family, we have prayed for yes. the United States. Uh, they are great people of this country and other parts of the world that have been praying and watching what is happening. And uh, we are glad that the elections are coming to a close. Uh, as of now, as we speak, uh, the results are not yet very clear. But whatever the case we believe that God has that nation in its hands. And we want to encourage you to trust God for the future. There's a reset in the nation, but God is in control. And so we pray for you that as you go into the next phase of life as a nation, God will be with you and will bless this nation so that you can be a blessing to the world, even as you have been before. Thank you so much, Bishop. We're looking forward to this great service. We're going to hand over to our moderator now, Pastor Angie Yegon, 
from Sitam Valley Road. Good morning and thank you for joining us today on Sitam Broadcast Service for this family service. As always, we look forward to a special time in worship and in the Word of God. My name is Angie Yagon and I will be your moderator. We welcome all of you who are listening to this service on Hope FM, those of you who are watching us on Hope TV, and those of you who are following us on all our Sitam Church Online channels every Sunday at this time. And our hashtag for today is Divine Reset. Wow, I like that. You can't wait to see what that will mean for you. And as always, we just want to get started with a time of praise and worship. And our worship team is on standby to lead us to the throne room of God. I like to always remind you, disengage from all the worries and anything that has occupied your mind and allow this time to be led to the throne room of God in worship by our amazing worship team. Welcome our CPS worship team. Hallelujah! Come on, somebody make a joyful noise! Did I hear a joyful noise to the King of Kings? you're joining us, you can just stand up and give the Lord a dance of praise. Yesterday, today, and forever He never fails Jehovah never fails He will do what He said He My God God never fails Jehovah never fails He's the same yesterday
fulfill me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. God is my father, he will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Hey, his name is Shahab.
change. We worship you today. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In your greatness, we worship you. Yeah, yeah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, leave me at the altar with my Father. Lord Almighty God, that is my prayer. We thank you, Jehovah Father, Jehovah God. You are great. You are marvelous. You are precious. Leave me at the altar with my Father, Lord. That is my prayer and my conviction, Jehovah God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You are precious, Jehovah God. You are marvelous, mighty Redeemer. You are great, O Lord. Great is our God. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. We worship you, Almighty Redeemer. What a great moment, O Jehovah Father, just to come before you, just to come and praise you and worship you and talk about how good you are. Lord, you have been so good to us. You have been so precious to us. Indeed, this is the day the Lord you have made. May we rejoice and be glad in the presence of a living God. Thank you, Lord Almighty Father. I want to pray, O Jehovah Father, for someone who is going through some difficulties. I want to pray, O Jehovah Father, for someone who says, God, may you come in for me, O Lord. I want to pray, Jehovah Master, for that marriage, O God, mighty Redeemer, that the Lord is restoring today. My sister, God is restoring your marriage today. My brother, the Lord is hearing your prayer and God is restoring it. Oh, Lord Almighty Father, we thank you, Jehovah Father, for these dear ones who say that I'm tuning to Hope TV. I'm going through the YouTube. I'm going through the Facebook, whichever media you are using. God is listening to your prayer. And Lord, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to bless your name, oh dear Master Redeemer. We want to pray for the land of Kenya. Remember, oh God, our land. We want to remember our leaders, oh Jehovah Father. And even as we do that, oh God, I want to pray for our pastors, oh Lord. I want to pray for our pastor across the globe, that pastor who is going through difficulties, especially during this COVID-19. My pastor God is listening to your voice. I want to pronounce Hebrews 6, 10 upon your life. For God is not unjust. He will not forget that which you have done and you continue to do, my pastor. You may have taken some loan and you are struggling even how to pay. A miracle is coming along your way, my pastor. Because God is saying, I have heard you. I have seen what you are going through and I'm going to bless you. Father, we want to pray, O Jehovah Father. I want to thank you, mighty Redeemer. For the land of Nigeria, remember them, O God. Remember this dear ones, O oh Lord Almighty. Remember our friends in Nigeria. Remember our colleagues in South Sudan. We want to thank you, Lord, that which you are doing, O oh God Almighty. May you be blessed and may you be glorified, O oh Lord. Jehovah Father, I want to pray for our bishop as he brings your word, O oh Lord. O oh, mighty Redeemer, may you use your servant, O oh God, to minister to us, O oh God. And as somebody who is listening today at the end of this service, God is performing a miracle in your life. Father, may you answer that prayer for that young man who says, I have been revising my CV several times and God is saying, today you are receiving your miracle. This moment, you are receiving your miracle and as the servant of God is going to speak and as he will be speaking to us, he will be addressing us but it's God who is going to answer. It's God who is going to speak to us. The Lord, I want to thank you. I want to bless your name, oh dear Father, for this moment and this hour. Be with us, O oh God. Guide this moment, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. God bless you.
and adoration for you. Thank you for willing to take our place on that cross. We love and adore you, Jesus. We love that you have purchased us. Today we are called the righteousness of God. We stand unashamed, not because of the things we did, but because you who knew no sin was willing to take our place. What can we give you that is enough, Lord? Receive our worship. We adore you and we honor you, Jesus. We love you. We celebrate you. We will live forever constantly in worship, in adoration, in praise. Our hearts will constantly well up with praises and honor and adoration that is due to your holy name. How we love you. How we celebrate you. How we appreciate you. In Jesus' name we have worship. Amen and amen. What a beautiful moment. What a time, an awesome time in the presence of God. Indeed, we will never know how much it costed him to die on that cross for us. And what we can do is just pour out our hearts in worship. We appreciate our worship team. Thank you so much for leading us to that place that we can just connect with the Father. The Lord bless you. The Lord refresh you so much. I also want to appreciate our elder, uh, Musa, for just leading us in a time of intercession. We are delighted today. Our speaker is our outgoing bishop of Sitam, Dr. David Oginde. He will be speaking to us on a sermon title, When Your World is reset. This is part one of his parting shot to the ministry that he has led by the grace of God for the last 10 years. Once again, remember our hashtag for today is Divine Reset. Please engage with us. Post this on Twitter, on Instagram, and make sure you get your friends engaging on this message. Let's just occupy all those platforms for Jesus. And now as we continue, there's some important notices that will just enable you. Maybe you have a question or two about how ministry has been going on in this time. Please watch this clip. It will furnish you with the necessary notices. We are glad to extend a very warm welcome to everyone watching us on Hope TV, listening on Hope FM, and those of you streaming live on our Sitam Church online social media platforms. This is your Sitam Broadcast Service, CBS, leading you in worship and sharing the Word of God on air and online. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday morning family service. We are gathered on air and online from all over the world. God has something special for you as we worship Him together today. For our young people, we also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitam YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 1.30 p.m. The children have their Sunday school every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for those aged 10 to 12 years at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below. 
show at 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We want to invite you and your family to also connect with us on Wednesdays for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on the Sitam Church online social media platforms. Please send in your prayer requests before and during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully during this season. We expect safari group meetings to be virtual using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom. However, if the necessary steps are taken to ensure that you abide by the Ministry of Health protocols, then in-person meetings can be held. If you are not in a safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly to the Ministry of Health guidelines. Please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who may be bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services, allowing only 200 people to be present, and will also conduct the burial service on site. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitam Church offices are now open and also observing all Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitam Broadcast Service and thank you for paying attention to these notices. Please remember that all our assemblies are open for in-person worship services. However, if you wish to attend, you will have to register in advance to book a seat. You can do so by using the USSD code star 304 star 933 hash for Safaricom users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirmed for the service you chose to attend. If you are not a Safaricom user, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. God bless you. The Sitam family and all congregants are warmly invited to a special farewell service on CBS to say goodbye to our outgoing presiding bishop and his family. The service will take place virtually on Saturday the 14th of November from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. If you'd like to join us, please contact your Sitam senior pastor for details on registration and the link to the service. We want to appreciate you for your faithful giving despite this season of the pandemic. May the Lord bless you so much. And in case you're there and you're trusting God to open doors financially, may he do that. It's that time that we just want to worship our God with our giving and our offering. And there will be a clip that will be coming to give you instructions. Before that, let's just get to a time of praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you have given us so much. You've given us life. You've given us everything that we have. And today, Lord, what we are giving you is just a token to say thank you. Receive it, Father. May it bring glory and honor to your name. We pray for those who will be using the same, that they will be given wisdom that comes from you to use it to further your kingdom. Father, we pray for those who are trusting you for financial breakthrough that you will also provide for them. We give you today with a cheerful heart. Receive it with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch this clip. It will give you instructions on how you are to give. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for the continued support of God's work through Sitam. We believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. We have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the following platforms. M-Pesa or Airtel Money, the pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 
0800-242-934. For account name, please indicate the CITEM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service, but you are not a member of any CITEM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other CITEM pay bill numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfer or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Bank, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch, Account number 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. Swift code, K-C-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www. Click on the gift tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate your giving and continued prayers for the ministry. God bless you. Thank you for staying with us on CPS. It's now that special moment where we get to be nourished with the Word of God. And our speaker for today is our outgoing bishop, David Oginde. He will be speaking to us on a sermon titled, When Your World is Reset. Remember, our hashtag is Divine Reset. Without much ado, let me now welcome our bishop to speak to us. Welcome, bishop. Thank you, Pastor Angie. The Lord anoint you for this. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. What a wonderful day that the Lord has given to us that we may look at his word, rejoice in his presence. Like the psalmist said, this is the day that the Lord has made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. And so today we want to look at God's word. As you have been told, our topic today is when your world is reset. Have you ever had your computer, your tablet, or your phone reset? In computer language, a reset has several meanings. It could mean restart, refresh, reboot, or restore. Uh, all these have different uh, things that they do to your device. Restart or refresh processes are often carried out either to clear the memory of the device or to embed new updates into the system. So when you restart or refresh, uh, the memory that is temporary is cleared so that the brain of the computer, as it were, is refreshed. To reboot is often necessary when the device has hung, you know, either due to system overload or corruption of the system. And this sometimes may lead to some loss of data, especially any information that had not yet been stored in the system's hard disk or as we do today in the cloud. And so these processes are there to help bring this system back again. But there's another one which is to restore, which is a more serious reset, which takes the device to its original factory defaults. In this case, all data is erased any installed personal software is deleted and the thing is brought back, functionally speaking, back to its original new state. The reality is that all these processes have a measure of disruption to the workflow. Whatever you are doing, whether you restart, you refresh, you reboot or restore your device, there's a sense in which you have a level of disruption to you, whatever work you are doing. So sometimes this disruption can be by choice, where you yourself have decided you're going to restart, or in other occasions, it is forced by external circumstances. I have had experiences where you are in, I'm in the middle of work, and then suddenly a pop-up comes on my screen and say, the system needs to restart. And you, it gives you no choice. It simply says, in fact, there's even no need for telling you because there's nothing you can do. And it can be very frustrating, especially if you are working on something urgent or something important. What I find is that this which happens to our gadgets also happens 
in real life. Every once in a while, we are faced with a situation where our life system is reset. Sometimes it is voluntarily when we just feel like I need to refresh, I need to restart, I need to reboot. Uh, but other times, it simply comes like that warning. Your system is about to restart. Even worse is when your whole world goes into hard reset. All settings are lost, all your software is erased, all data is deleted, and your life goes back to factory defaults. And you know what that means. If you are left empty, you are left hopeless, everything that you have done over your life seems to just disappear. In the scriptures, we find many individuals whose worlds went through serious reset. I can just point a few. After they disobeyed God, Adam and Eve were thrown out of the garden where they had got used to enjoying a one-on-one -on -one fellowship with God, face-to-face -face fellowship with God. Noah found himself, found himself alone with his family in a brand new earth where there was nobody else. Everything had been swept away. Every living thing, every human being, everything that had been developed just cleaned and it was a reset. They found themselves alone on earth. Abraham was uprooted from his home country and taken into an unknown land where God told him he would go. Joseph found himself as a slave in Egypt after being sold by his jealous brothers. Job is the worst. He lost all his children, his possessions, and everything that could be lost when he was attacked by the devil. In the New Testament, we find people like Mary, a young girl who found herself pregnant by the Holy Spirit to give birth to a savior of the world. Was she prepared for it? Her world totally was turned upside down as it were, or was it the right side up? Paul was a man who was, had great zeal for the things of God, but in a different way. And his life was totally changed after he had an encounter with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. And the list is long. We can list various peoples uh, who went through this kind of tremendous changes in their lives. The fact and reality of life is that every once in a while, you may find your world turned upside down or completely reset. When you think that you just have a firm grip on life, you have a handle on life, then the steering kind of snaps off and you find yourself hurtling into an unfamiliar territory. Sometimes all your system data is erased. Your life is totally deleted. This can be very disorienting. And that's why I want to speak to us today on what you do when your world is reset. I would like us to use the story of the calling of Abraham to draw some lessons out of a text that, uh, that tells us about this. And it is found in Genesis chapter 12, right at the beginning. And if you have your Bible, just turn with me to Genesis chapter 12. We will read from verse number one to verse number nine. The Bible tells us, the Lord had said to Abram, leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had, had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. 
Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of More at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. From there, he went on towards the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued toward the Negev. That's the end of our reading. Let's pause for a moment and just pray that the Lord would speak to us through this word that we have read. Let's pray together. Everlasting Father, we are in your presence this morning. And Father, we want to thank you for speaking to us through this written word. And I want to pray, Lord, that as we share from this word that has been revealed and inspired of you, uh, Lord, we pray that even the spoken word may be anointed and inspired of you so that you may speak to your people exactly where you are and they may hear your voice even through these words. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I would like us to pick out of this text of scriptures some lessons on what one can do when your world is reset. I will pick three from the story of Abraham. In fact, I see several, but time does not allow us to go into details with each one of them. But let me highlight three of them. Number one is that when your world re is reset, accept the current realities. Number two is that you should pursue future possibilities. And number three, survey available opportunities. Accept current realities. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, that the Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, leave your people, leave your father's household, and go to the land that I am going to show you. We do not know the circumstances under which God spoke these words to Abraham, whether in a dream, through a prophet, in a vision, or whatever. But whatever the case, we can only imagine what must have, this must have sounded in the ears of Abraham and what impact it must have had on him. These days when we read these words, they sound so easy, so simple. Because we are now used to moving from places to places, uprooting ourselves, changing residence, going to different countries. But in those days, it was not that easy. Traveling was difficult. And so we might, it may sound quite ordinary or even spiritual for us to hear these words being brought to Abraham. But I can imagine that this must have been very disconcerting for Abraham. He was to leave everything that he knew, to leave his country. This was a call to depart from Haran, which had now become his country. And uh, Haran is known to have been a city of great comfort, a very developed city. And he's removed from there so that he could go to a different place. And God says, leave your country. He says, leave your people. Abraham was equally faced with the decision to abandon friends and colleagues, the people he had known over a while. He had to depart and go to a different place and leave behind all the known people, the friends and relatives. Leave your father's family. God called upon Abraham to break ranks with his own father's family and go to a different place. And then most of all, he's told to a land I will show you. In other words, it is an unknown land. He does not know where this place is. God does not tell him where they are going. He simply has to pick up his things and go. And this is what I call a divine reset. When God upsets your life and thrusts you to the unknown, the question that comes to mind is, what would you do? What would you do if God were to come to you in a similar way today and make a similar kind of demand of you to arise and leave everything that you know and go to something else? What would you do if your boss calls you into the office 
and gives you a letter of retrenchment telling you that today is your last day with us. And no matter how they apologize, you know, I'm sorry, you whatever, it totally upsets the system. Or you are transferred to a remote, one of the most remote branches where no one else wants to go. What would you do if you received a word from your bank that they are offering you a home for auction? What would you do if your doctor declares to you that you have cancer? What would you do? Whereas we are not given the details of Abraham's reaction to God's demand on his life, his response tells us that he took this in stride. He faced the reality that had come upon him without any sense of delusion. I know some of us may be thinking that the demand of Abraham was not as serious as retrenchment, as serious as a sickness, as serious as a death. Uh, he was just being moved. And in any case, he had God. That is what we may think. But it is not true. This actually seems to have been Abraham's continued nature in dealing with situations and circumstances that came in his, in his way. One other time, God appeared to him much later in his life and demanded that he offers his only son, Isaac, as a burnt sacrifice to God. Yet again, we find Abraham does not argue. He takes it in stride. He does not know what is going to happen, but he takes it in stride and moves on. And I find a very similar kind of attitude in the life of one called Job. When Job got the news of the total loss of his family, his property, and everything that he ever owned, the Bible tells us in the book of Job, actually in Job chapter 1, verse number 20, the Bible says, at this Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Here is a man who has lost everything that can be lost. Completely everything. And when he receives news of this loss, what he does is he falls down in worship. I'm not sure I would do that myself. The name of the Lord be praised. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Compare that with people like Moses. When Moses was called, he struggled. Jeremiah, Gideon, and others who argued seriously with God because they just couldn't see how this would happen in their lives. The lesson that we can learn from Abraham and Job is that when our world is reset, let us face that reality and take it in stride. Many times we remain in denial because we can't just accept that this has happened to us. We, are, we find ourselves in great emotional and upheaval. If your device hangs up in the middle of something very important that you are doing and it tells you, wait, your system is restarting, there is no point hitting many keys. I see some people, pop, 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 pop. it doesn't matter. The thing is resetting. The best is just to accept, allows the thing to restart. You may lose some work in the process, but life must continue. In fact, the screen sometimes goes blank and you don't know what to do. And that is what sometimes happens to us when our life is reset. System is restarting. And while system is restarting, all you can see is a blank screen. No future, nothing. You can't see how your world will ever come back again. Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 33, in this world, you will have trouble. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The best way to deal with this kind of circumstances is to accept, okay, it has happened, but my life is in the hands of God. God gave, God has taken away, praise be to his name. I know some of you are saying, 
that is easier said than done. But number two, pursue future possibilities. The second lesson that we learn from Abraham is that when his world was reset, he set out to pursue future possibilities. His response to the divine reset is very interesting because the Bible tells us in chapter 12, verse number four, the book of Genesis. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated and the people they had acquired in Haran and they set out for the land of Canaan and they arrived there. That is what I call faith. For a 75-year-old man to uproot his family and head to the unknown takes faith. When you have not been told where you are going, no wonder Abraham is known as the father of faith. What is faith? The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. And the Bible says in verse number 8, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, and listen to this, not knowing where he was going. I wonder if this man is called the father of faith. Many times when our world has been shaken, when our world has been reset, we have nothing to hang on to. Let me tell you, the only thing that remains is faith. Faith is believing that God is who he says he is. In fact, that's what the Bible says, that whoever comes to him must believe that he is. In those moments of darkness, when your system is still restarting and he's telling you, wait, the only thing you can hang on to is God. In what he has said, who he has said he is, and what he has said he can do or he will do. For Abraham, God had promised him in verse number two and three of Genesis chapter 12 that we read, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. This, I believe, stirred in Abraham something about faith and trusting in God that what God had said he was going to do and this man Abraham was going to be a great man and that catapulted him to move to the unknown as the book of Hebrews tells us because God has said it I believe it for us one of the anchor passages of scriptures of texts of scriptures that I hang on to when my world has been reset is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Plans not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. So in the midst of that darkness, in the midst of not knowing where east is and west is and northeast and south is, the only thing I can settle down in my heart, in my mind is that I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I am. I don't know what is ahead. But I know God has said that he has plans for me. And those plans are for good and they are not for evil. They are plans to give me a hope and they are plans to give me a future. Let me tell you, that in itself gives me energy to face every circumstance, every situation, whether I see the future or not whether my screen is blank or not, I have reason to believe that God has a plan for me. This was Job's response when his world was completely reset. He declared in Job chapter 10, and he said, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns 
within me. Job chapter 19, verse 25 to verse 27. This man makes this powerful declaration. Everything right now does not make sense. Everything does not add up. My screen is blank, but I know my Redeemer lives. It is a faith that refuses to focus on the current realities, but looks firmly to the future possibilities of what God can do in the future, irrespective of what is happening in the present. Number three, survey available opportunities. The Bible tells us in verse number, 12, uh, number six of Genesis chapter 12, Abraham traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Moreh at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Verse number eight says, from there he went on toward the hill east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Then Abram set out and continued towards the Negev in verse number nine. This is amazing. Whereas Abraham set out by faith to pursue the promises of God, when he got to this land that God had brought him to, he did not just arrive and sit there. He began to survey the land to understand it better. There's something significant that is noted in this survey. In verse number six, the Bible says, the Canaanites were in the land. Why would God bring an old man of 75 years to a land where there are Canaanites. The Canaanites were vicious people, as you know from the scriptures. But God says, this is it. In other words, even though it is God who brought Abraham into this land, there was some significant work to be done in order to conquer this land. But what is even more significant for me is that while Abraham was surveying this land, the Bible tells us in verse number seven, and listen to this clearly. The Bible says, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. And then the Bible says, so Abraham built an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. In other words, God brings great reassurance and a word of great support to Abraham in spite of the presence of the Canaanite, this land I have given to you. Now, sometimes we imagine that if God is taking us to a place, it will be all nice, easy, and dandy. Oh, far from it. God often takes us to a land where there are Canaanites. And when Abraham heard this, his response was to worship God, build an altar there to the Lord who had appeared to him. Brothers and sisters, when your world is reset, what you need to do is survey the land where you are. You will be surprised at what God has put before you. Sometimes we spend too much time mourning, crying, wondering, looking back and doing all manner of things. And that is natural, but for a while. Rise up into your land of opportunities. Survey what is there. Because when the world is reset, when your world is reset, it is possible that God wants to do a new thing in your life. God wants to do a new thing in your company. God wants to do a new thing in your family. God wants to do a new thing in your country. God wants to do a new thing wherever it is. And so ours is to listen to the voice of God. And who knows, you may just hear him saying, I am giving you this land. It may be full of Canaanites, but this is your land. It may look like impossible, but this is what I'm giving you. 
There is no gain saying that we are living in a world of great upheavals. Many people have had their lives turned almost completely upside down. Like computer gadgets, our lives have been reset. Some restored to original factory default, empty and hopeless. If you are one such person, learn these tips from Abraham. Number one, accept your realities. Move on from denial. It's amazing that even in this season of coronavirus, there are people who still do not believe that there's coronavirus. And so they are here, there, doing this and saying that and everything. My friend, it is time you just accept that this is what has happened and you move on. One of the scriptures that makes me very, uh, that is very, I find very interesting is that when Moses died and God appeared to Joshua to now lead the people of Israel, the first thing that Joshua, God tells Joshua is, Moses, my servant, is dead. So, you people, whatever you want, Moses was great, but Moses, my servant, is dead. That is the reality. Now, therefore, arise. And there are times when Moses in your life has died. Just accept it. I think that sounds very good. When Moses dies in your life, that will be my next sermon. Accept the realities and move on. Number two, pursue future possibilities. Put your hand in the hand of God. Put your faith in God and walk with God into the next place where God wants to take you. And number three, survey available opportunities. I'll be talking about this a little more next time. But there are great opportunities that God is bringing upon us. It's amazing that in the midst of troubles, there are people who actually take advantage of that and get into higher heights, greater things, greater exploits, and do amazing things. Paul says, forgetting all that is behind, I press on towards what lies ahead. God says in Isaiah 43, Forget the former things. Behold, I'm doing something new. God gives us a similar kind of promise. And I want to encourage every one of us, wherever we find ourselves in this situation of uncertainty, remember, God has great plans for us and he is doing a great thing. Let me close by speaking more specifically to us in Sitam. We are going through a transition period, and this can be unsettling for some of us. Oh, what is going to happen? Hey, what is going to happen? Let me tell you, God is in control, and he is about to do amazing things in this ministry. He is like the promise that he gave to Abraham. I'm going to make your name great. I am going to make you a blessing, and I can tell you this ministry is going to higher heights. God is doing something new. Let's forget the past. Let's forget what all those other guys have done, including Oginde. Just let's focus on the purposes of God. Let's hear the voice of God and let's see what opportunities God is bringing upon us. I can tell you, like Pastor White used to say, the best is yet to come. God wants to do amazing things in our midst and we must not be anxious about anything. We must settle down and just put our faith in God and walk with him towards where he is taking us. Because when our world is reset, God is the one who does the divine reset and he's totally in control. I want to pray for us this morning. You may be listening to me. And as this word has come around, you are saying, my world has collapsed. My world has been reset. My Everything is falling apart. I don't know whether you are that person. Maybe it is your family. Maybe it is your business. Maybe it is a sickness. Maybe it is your finances. I want to commit you to the Lord who says, put your hands in my hands and I will lead you to the land that you don't know. Let us pray together. The first prayer I want to make is for any person 
who has never made a commitment to Jesus Christ. You are listening this morning and you have never made a commitment to Christ. Let me tell you, it is the best step you can take. And I want to ask you at this point, just say this prayer with me as we pray together. Say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I lay my life upon your hands. I pray that you forgive me my sins and wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. Help me from this day to live for you and to walk with you all the days of my life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for every person who has prayed that prayer. I pray, Jehovah God, that they will experience the miracle of salvation in their lives and they will know for sure that they are children of God. This is our prayer this morning according to your promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We pray in Jesus' name. Father, I want to pray right now for every person who is listening and they are finding their world has been turned upside down, inside out. They are in a state of confusion. I pray in the name of Jesus that first and foremost, you will give them an attitude of praise, an attitude of trust, an attitude of faith, that they may put their faith in you and know confidently that you are in control. But more so, I pray, Father, that you'd lead them to the land like you led Abraham, where their future lies. Lead them, oh God, from a, to a new business level. Lead them, oh God, to a new family relationship. Lead them, oh God, to whatever it is that they need in order for their lives to be brought back again. I pray for divine healing for those people who are sick in their bodies. And may they arise, oh God, to a new life because of your grace and mercy. This is our prayer this morning, that Father, we will all experience your divine touch, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. If you made that prayer of salvation, please get in touch with us through our numbers, through our Facebook pages and all our social media platforms. We want to get you into a process of growing in your faith. We have materials for you that will help you, irrespective of where you are in the world. We will have access and we can get in touch with you. God bless you. And now I hand over the service to our Pastor Angie. Pastor Angie, welcome and Thank lead us you. to the closing of the service. Thank you so much, Bishop, for speaking to us. Amen. One of the things that this message has done for us as SITAM is putting the transition process into perspective. Amen. And all glory and honor to God. Amen. The Lord bless you and refresh you. We look forward. God has amazing things ahead for us. Amen. There may be Canaanites, uh -huh. but we are okay. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> you had that right. <laughs> Indeed, there may be Canaanites, but... God is with us. Amen. It's been a great time just hearing the word of God. I do not have doubts that you have been blessed and that the Lord has spoken to you. Do remember that on Tuesday after Sunday live, there will be a, a time for you to engage with Bishop if you have questions that you'd like him to answer or just even putting this message into perspective. Also remember on Wednesday, we will be meeting for our, uh, there will be a prayer time and our pastors will be leading you in a time of prayer. You can send in your prayer request and we will be just grateful and joyful to pray with you. Also remember on Saturday, we have the youth service uh, from uh, 2 p.m. all the way to 3. And also on Sunday morning, we begin with our children service in the morning and we get to another time like today where we get to hear part two of this sermon. It's not that time that just, we just want to close the service and let me welcome uh, Reverend Cuccio who will share the words of benediction with us today. Welcome Reverend. Thank you Pastor Angie. How has this message landed for you? Wow. <laughs> when my world is reset, yeah. I think I always struggle with accepting current realities. You're not alone. Was, okay. <laughs> so for me, my take home um, amongst many is that when God interrupts my life through divine reset, I should just surrender to his plans and purposes. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was also my take, away, my take home 
for I know the plans that I have for you. So I'm game, I'm home. Amen. The Lord bless you. You Blessings. close the service. Amen. And as we close this service, let's just share the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. May he keep you from all harm, all danger, all disease, and all affliction. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May he dispel any trace of darkness, defeat, and discouragement in, his, in your life. May the Lord turn his face toward you and help you accept your current realities, pursue future possibilities, and survey available opportunities in your challenging circumstances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week in God's presence. Amen. Thank you very much. You are the Savior with the spiritual touch. And now we want to thank our safari groups that have continued meeting consistently through various digital platforms, many for the very first time. Special thanks to those safari groups across the country that have reached out on their own initiative to support those in need around them. Jesus said, whatever you have done to the list of this, you have done to me. May God continue to bless you and your family and may he shower you with the richest blessings to the glory and honor of his holy name. Amen. <laughs>